Hello, and welcome to the Echelon Studios podcast, where we discuss titles from the Echelon Studios catalog. I'm your host, Jesse Randall. And today we are here with the screenwriters of Marmalade, Jill Sorensen and Jennifer Kustner. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Walsy. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Yeah. <laughs> well, Marmalade started kind of as a fun writing exercise for Jill and I, because we um we were roommates for years. We modeled together, lived all over the world together, uh, where we were in acting class together, loosely based on, you know, kind of the world we were working in and living in, which was kind of downtown New York, uh, in the fashion industry, in the modeling world. It's about a supermodel in the 90s early 2000s kind of being put out to pasture as she's getting too old for her job at the age of uh 29 because yeah. back then you were considered completely over the hill at 29 in that business i think that still goes today unfortunately it still kind of <laughs> goes today yeah <laughs> yeah so it's about two roommates in new york city who are fashion models and they also live with this makeup artist hairdresser and um the one character that I play is desperately trying to get her boyfriend to marry her, which she can't. And she ends up moving back in with her roommates. So her life is falling completely apart and she completely just like humiliates herself, dates all the wrong guys, does all the wrong things, kind of in the way of just, she's just doesn't love herself, you know? So it's a story about finding yourself and it's a story about friendship. And it really takes a look at the kind of underbelly of the fashion industry because we lived it, you know, dealing with ageism. Uh, we're sitting here 20 years later now and we're, you know, I'm not worrying about my wrinkles, but 20 years ago in the film, I am. <laughs> I can't remember. So it's, it's, you know, it's about ageism and, and, you know, you're judged by your looks. You're, you're like some of the characters are saying it. Your, your piece of meat. So it's setting as the backdrop of that industry and shows the good and the bad and the friendship. What were your biggest challenges in production or getting this film off the ground or getting this project made? The challenges for production were at any production. You know, it was kind of back then it wasn't as easy just to pick up your phone and film something. You know, you mm -hmm. had to have a full, full film crew, which costs money, which our, our film was a, a SAG film. So, um, yeah, mostly expense and getting anything off the ground in that industry is, you know, kind of important. Well, so and I think, too, Jenny and I were in acting class with this amazing acting coach, uh, Sheila Gray. And we decided when we decided, oh, we want to write this movie and we'd never written anything. So we thought we'll do this little indie guerrilla movie for 50 grand. And next thing you know, we're sitting on set of a million dollar production because wow. we got these producers to do it. And we were terrified because <laughs> wow. we had to play two of the lead roles in it. So just the challenge of working with great actors like Grant Show, Michael T. Weiss, Sarita Shalver, like all these well-known actors was definitely Jenny and I would look at each other and look around who are all these people <laughs> and we were scared terrifying basically so finding the courage to go and do it that you know now when I look back I'm like whoa we were really kind of fearless <laughs> yeah. so um and and just the basics of getting uh everyone on the production you know, in a creative process, everyone is right, but you can't decide who's right because everyone thinks they're right because it's just an opinion and everything. There are a million challenges, but mostly I think it was it was just overwhelming for us as first time lead actors in a movie working with well-known actors. I'm reading this book currently about the making of A League of Their Own, and uh, there's a lot of parallels between how they made the movie and the struggles getting the movie made in the actual film. Uh, and obviously this is like the late, 80s early 90s when it was in development and um there were so many challenges just getting it made with the perception from the studios being who wants to watch a movie about women who wants to hear all the story about women i mean oh yeah, yeah, yeah while we got shut down in like a year who wants to hear about this did you find in terms of getting the film financing and getting the film produced did you run into challenges like that or people eager to tell this story did you find or did you face a lot of rejection in terms of lack of interest or allegedly lack of interest in getting this movie made or were people enthusiastic or tell us a little bit about that? 
Some were definitely enthusiastic. You know, a lot of our early readers were enthusiastic and we've workshopped a lot of the scenes at acting class and people liked it. So, you know, that was that was fun. Um, I, I think it's universal, like trying to get any film done is like pushing a giant boulder up a friggin mountain, you know, right. um, and I think that's still true today. That's just the nature of the beast, unless you're, you know, the one percent of the top movie stars in the world. Right. It's just it's other people's money. And um, that's hard I mean, to get. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I think in a way uh, we were lucky because I would agree a lot of people who say, oh, women can't sell movies, women can't do this and that. We originally, Marmalade was more about a story uh, kind of about these two women's lives. They just happened to be models and they had this orange cat Marmalade who had kind of a spiritual, uh, you know, ability to it. And so instead, it became all the producers we met with, and they said, no, we're interested in the fashion industry. We're interested in the modeling industry. So I think wow. we got lucky that that was of interest. So a movie that was more about friendship and finding yourself became more about modeling as we went by, because that had kind of a commercial aspect to it. Do you feel like everyone was mostly on the same page during these rewrites from in terms of like getting notes from producers and directors and like investors, whatever. Do you feel like there was like a sense of harmony of like, we're all making the same movie or were people kind of all over the place in terms of what everyone thought they were making? Well, I guess it, Jenny and I have a really crazy sense of humor, this silly sense of humor. So we would, we make fun of everything and everybody. We think everything is funny. And we just wanted, and we just, just wanted more humor. Our more humor, and I think, more humor. And sometimes they would have us tone that down. Mm -hmm. So we, we, you know, some of the funnier scenes, a couple of my favorite scenes, are actually not even in the movie. <laughs> wow. So I think uh, that definitely happened to some degree. I mean, go going to make a movie is like going to war. Some people in Hollywood will say, and you know, yeah. where everyone has an opinion, but in. All in all, the end result is somewhere close to what we had in mind. Yeah, it was a, it was it was a it was a smooth going um, shooting schedule and set. I, I'd say it was a very positive experience. There were like, yeah big blow ups or anything. Everyone was great and yeah. You know, and you know, all the yeah. the actors couldn't have been like more fun in bringing their take and little improv improvision uh you know improvising along the way so it, it was fun it was really fun there's a you know a lot of talk about social progress i think sometimes social progress is like three steps forward two steps back three steps forward two steps back but i think a conversation that has come up recently in recent years that wasn't a part of the conversation previously was about ageism particularly for women um you know, there are things like The Golden Girls is still one of the most popular shows on television, even though it's been off the air a bajillion years. It's still always highly po popular in streaming. Uh, Kylie Minogue has a big hit on TikTok and in the charts this summer. And she's uh, of a certain age. And it's one of her biggest hits of her entire career. And she has spoken out about, I think, things are getting better for women. But I I'm not a woman, so I can't speak to that. But what what are you your <laughs> feelings about that? Do you think things are better, or worse, the same? I I would say absolutely. You know, I recently did some modeling for um, um Bobby Brown's new line called Jones Road, which is a huge kajillion dollar hit on TikTok and Instagram because it specifically is marketed to women of every age, especially older, because it's like you know super moisturized and really made for you know say like you know skin that isn't especially super young and it's marketed with models up to their 70s are but modeling it, for it but i think that's happening we're just at the precipice of that because i think ageism against women is the last frontier i think i mean we've had a lot of body positivity seen a lot of that in the last five ten years so i i think we're just at the beginning the, the last year or two and specifically now this fall we're seeing it where uh there's more of an awareness because let's face it hollywood women at 40 you're over i mean it's still really harsh 85 percent of the the 
most watch movies are still written by men. So yeah, we have a long way to go. Go. I think it is. It, it definitely is getting a lot of better. A lot better. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. We appreciate your time and hearing your thoughts, and we look forward to Marmalade being released soon.